going back to school for the fall is kind of a big deal. It changes all of our systems, all of our routines, and there is a lot of anxiety that goes into it. So today, we're gonna talk about how you can set your kids up for success for this school year. Hello there friends, I am so excited that you're here to hang out with me today because today we are getting ready for back to school. Now I know people all across this country go back to school at different periods of time so your kids might already be in school and if that's the case for you, this still is going to be helpful information for you. And if your kids are going back to school maybe later on in August or September, then this will be great for you as well. Now if you're listening to this sometime in the future, I'm sure this can help you out because our kids always need our support and helping them be successful. And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Now, this podcast has been going on for, gosh, almost six years. And every single fall, we talk about going back to school. So if you go to yourliferocks.com and in the search bar, you search back to school, you can see all of our past episodes that we have done on this topic. And every year, it's a little bit different. So... If you're really like, I need to dive deep, I really need to get motivated, I need tips to help my kids be successful this year at school, go there, check that out. You can also go over to YouTube, onto our YouTube channel, Your Life Rocks, and then you can search back to school and see all of those episodes there as well. So couple of options for you. Now, following this episode, we're going to have a whole series of amazing experts that are going to help you in different aspects of getting ready for school. But today, being the first of that series, I really want to just set a solid foundation for you. Now, speaking of foundations, we do have a course that you can take at yourliferocks.com about helping you set up a strong foundation for your kids for the school year. And it's full of checklists and resources, and just tools to help you set some strong intentions, to help create some routines, and to really set off the school year in a balanced way for both you and your kids. It's very affordable. It's less than $5. It's a super easy course to kind of go through, and you can find more information about that by going to yourliferocks.com and then click on the programs and resources tab at the top. All right, so as we're getting ready for this next school year, I don't know about you, but I just feel like there's so much pressure this year. Last year kind of felt like everything was unknown. There was a lot of changing things and, uh, you know, it was a totally different environment. And this year, I feel like the pressure is about helping our kids get on the right foot, get right back on track, maybe make up for some of the things that they lost in the last school year. And that's a lot. (laughs) Like That's a lot of pressure. And that is a lot to worry about and to focus on and to do. In addition to working and all of the other things that we're doing. And I am finding that this is one of those things that's taking up more space than it should. Not necessarily like it's not worth taking up that space, but sometimes things that can float around in our heads, can float around in our hearts. We worry about things. We toss and turn different ideas and what about this and what about that? And it just becomes very consuming of our thoughts and our actions and And really the best way to do that is to get some clarity, bring some clarity to the chaos that is going on around us and create a strong action plan going forward. And when we have this foundation of a strong action plan, it makes everything else so much easier. It makes all of the other decisions and choices that we have to make for our kids as they go into this school year so much easier. And that's what I'm hoping that you'll take away from today's episode is that you can take away from the three action items that we're going to talk about exactly that. What is most important for you this school year and how can you use those to be those those compass points, those anchor points as you make all of the other decisions that you're going to have to make in getting our kids ready for school. Ready? Let's just jump right in. Number one is setting clear objectives for your kids this school year. Now, normally I would say goals, setting strong goals for your kids. But if you've heard me talk before on the podcast, you've heard me talk about one of my favorite project management or or time management software systems I use called Sunsama. And they started this new feature where at the beginning of the week, you set objectives for the week. Like what are you hoping to focus on this week, to accomplish this week? And it has been so helpful for me just to have that 
objective. It's not necessarily a full-fledged goal, but it's kind of just like, what am I aiming at? What can I cut away if it doesn't align with what this focus is? And as I was preparing for this podcast episode, I was like, that's really what it is for our kids is it's not so much goals. And yeah, it's great to set goals for your kids going into the school year. And I kind of walk you through that process of setting balance goals for your kids in that program that I talked about earlier. But this is really more of a broad brush objective. And really when you're thinking about this, I want you to think about two different objectives for your kids. One is academic and one is personal. So the academic objective could be things like staying organized with their schoolwork or getting caught up with math you know your kids best. And especially this last year with our kids doing school a lot from home, we've kind of gotten an insight to what it is that they truly need in order to be successful. So let that be your guide in helping you set up an objective for your kids and what they can be doing, what they should be achieving, what you want to focus on for them academically this next school year. And it can honestly be something even as broad as like being more of a self-starter being more organized with their assignments, communicating with their teachers more. There's things that doesn't necessarily have to be very specific, but it could be specific as in needing to get caught up with their grade level in math or reading or or whatever subject that you feel like they just need a little bit more help. It could be that your kids are totally rocking it and your objective for them is to take on some more advanced things that challenge them. And that could just be it. Now, the goal is more of like the details that work into that, right? So if that, for example, is your objective of wanting to challenge them more, find a challenge academically, then the goal could be finding a subject that interests them that they need to learn more about or getting them into an AP class of whatever the subject that is. Those are more goals. Goals are more specific. An objective is more of that broad brush. Now, when we're thinking about more of those personal objectives, again, this is where we have a chance as moms to build character into our kids. And we talk about that a lot on this podcast. And I feel like when we talk about building character, especially as a mom, it can feel very daunting and very big, but we all know it's very important, right? And the thing is, is that building character with our kids can be like the smallest, simplest things. And we overthink it and we make it more complicated than it has to be. But having an objective on the ways our kids can grow this year personally, grow in character this year personally, that will help you kind of alleviate some of the unknown and alleviate some of that pressure and the feeling of it being so hard, you know? So when you're thinking about what those objectives are personally, it might be to have more social interaction. That's my objective for my youngest, is to find ways for him to have healthy social interaction. So my goals underneath that objective are gonna be things looking at sports, gonna be looking at clubs, gonna be looking at friends that he can get together with and how that all fits into his schedule. Now, for my older son, he's in high school, and so I'm really looking at extracurricular things that he can be doing that light up a passion for him and give him something that he can get excited about. In years past, to be completely honest, some of these personal objectives of mine is to get my kids to stop being so selfish or to think about others or to grow in kindness towards others or empathy in others. It could be just helping them to be more organized with their time or not having tizzy fits in the morning when they have to get ready for school. These are general objectives that will help you as a mom, stay focused and stay clear on what your role is and how you can best support your kids to be successful. Now, a lot like what we talk about when we're teaching inside of the Life Balance Method or any of the courses that we talk about here, even weekly success planning, it's not about being perfect. (laughs) You will have time to grow on new things to work on. So trying to tackle everything that needs to be worked on all at once is not not going to work. It's kind of a recipe for disaster and it's very stressful. So just find those little things that you know will make a big difference and focus only on those. All right, number two are your other partnerships. Okay, so number one, we're talking about creating some objectives for your kiddos. And there's that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And sometimes we feel like we're in this 
silo, right? And there's not other people around us, but this is where community is really important. And creating a community for your kids is something that we can very much proactively do. Now, this community around our kids could be caretakers, could be grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunts, teachers, coaches, youth pastors, the list goes on and on and on. But when you start thinking about who those people are that are involved in your kid's day-to-day life, this is where you have an opportunity for partnership. To just go to them and say, hey, this year for the school year, I'm just really wanted to touch base with you and make sure that we're on the same page and communicate with you kind of what the main goals and objectives I've set for my kids are, but not just tell them, but ask them. Let them know what objectives and goals you've set up for your kids, but then ask them, do you feel like that that makes sense for them? Or is there something else that you feel like might be better suited? Now, my kids have been doing martial arts since really the beginning of the pandemic, something for them to get outside of the house that was safe and and gave them that social interaction and, and something to do physically. And I'll tell you what, the things that I think my kids need to work on, I guarantee you that the master at the place that they do karate probably has something different in mind. <laughs> Because he sees a different side of my kids when I'm not there. And so he can probably tell me a lot of what they need to work on character-wise. Now, there are some teachers that are involved in my kids' homeschool, some uh, tutors and some other support that kind of comes alongside, and they might have better ideas or different ideas than I have around academic goals. And whether they have feedback or not, Getting buy-in of that partnership and letting them know like, hey, this is something that I've noticed that they need to work on. I am working on doing X, Y, Z with them to help them get there. And I would just appreciate any enforcement that you have on that or any other ideas that you have on when the kids are in your care or under your supervision that might align with that. And this kind of partnership is super duper important. Now, if your kids are going to public school, your new teachers, they probably won't have any input. But if they know in advance what it is that you're working on with your kids, because that's what most teachers are doing in the first few weeks of school, right? They're evaluating their current students to see what they need to work on that year. And so if you are in there proactively talking to the teacher, setting up a strong relationship and partnership with them to say, these are the things that I've noticed. If you notice something different, let me know. But how can we partner together to make sure that we're making progress on these goals and objectives that I'm setting for my kids. They're with your kids probably more than you are. Well, definitely they are. So having that partnership and setting up a strong communication on how can we check in with each other to see how this is going, how it's doing, that is such a golden nugget to have in your back pocket to help you be the best mom and to really set your kids up for strong success. And then moving into number three thing that you can do proactively to set your kids up for success is to really look at their routines. Now, when we're looking at their routines, we have to look at like the practical things, right? Like what time do they need to be up, get out the door, all of that stuff. But I also encourage you to look at those objectives that you've set for them and see how that fits into their back to school routines. We're talking about before school, the morning routine, We're talking about after school routine and we're talking about nighttime routine as far as like bedtime goes and and preparing for the next day. Those are golden opportunities for you to plug in different lessons or build different habits around those objectives that you've set for your kids this year. And so as you're building those routines, look for those opportunities that you can have to further develop them, to further set them up for success against these objectives. Now, to give you an example to this, so say, for example, one of the character uh, objectives that you have for your kiddo is to help them be more proactive and organized. Like if you feel like you're always having to remind them, you're maybe even doing it for them, maybe this is the year that they learn to start doing some things for themselves, right? We want our kids to be as self-sufficient as possible. So maybe in their nighttime routine, before they brush their teeth, before they do all of that stuff, their objective, their part of their routine is to look at what they have going on in the next day and prepare for it the night before. Now, telling your kids to just do this is not going to work, right? You have to come alongside and show them. It's going to take some time and effort on your part, 
But once you can teach your kids these skills, it makes your life so much easier. It really does. And it helps them be more successful and makes us feel better about raising successful kids too, right? So take the time to really think about, okay, I'm going to set up these routines for my kids. What, what do they need in order to reach those objectives? And what might they not know? What can I teach them? How can I engage with them? And especially moms, as your kids get older, It gets harder and harder to have connection points with your kids, to spend quality time with your kids because they're becoming more independent and they want to do stuff on their own or just with their friends and they just don't need you as much as when they're little. And it can be really hard as a mom to go through that. But when you can find these little nuggets of time to spend with them, to teach them things, to ask them questions, it makes a world of difference. And so using these routines as a point of bonding can be really impactful as well. So start with the morning routine because there's a lot of practicality that goes into that. Again, look at those uh, goals and objectives and, and think about how they might be able to fit into there. And if, you know what, none of them fit into the morning routine or any of the routines, that's fine. Just make sure that they fit into a couple of them so that you're utilizing that habitual time of a, a morning routine, after school routine, nighttime routine, to really hammer home some long lessons because those are the things that will last. Those are the things that will stick with them because there's repetition involved in that. So start with the morning routine, then outline the after school routine, then outline the evening routine. Now I say outline because this is all a learning process, right? So uh, in the course, I kind of talk about like how to structure this outline and how to make sure you have everything in there that you need. Um, how to communicate that and how to follow through because uh, we can make all the plans we want in the world, but if we're not following through on it, our kids aren't going to follow through on it either. So you can find all of those tips inside the Building Back a Strong Foundation for Back to School course that we have over at yourliferocks.com. And, you know, as you're getting ready for back to school, and we talked about these three things to do in order to set that strong foundation, to have that anchor, to make all of the other choices from It's important that we remind ourselves of these things that we're setting out to do because life is going to come and it's going to get busy. It's going to get busy for the kids. It's going to get busy for us. And it's really easy to forget or even to make a conscious decision to say, I don't have time for this right now. We need to move on. So I would encourage you after this episode is done to really think about what safeguards you're going to have in place to help you stick with whatever plan you have for back to school. It could be something that you're hanging on the wall. It could be something that you have in your day timer. Um, It could be something that you have a day timer, like planner, you know, it could be a sticky note on your computer. It could be something that you have on your Google calendar. Just to remind you, like every Sunday night, a little reminder pops up to say, these are the objectives that we have for the school year. Make it a great week. And if your kids are older, you can add that to their calendar too. That way they remember yeah. (laughs) My goal this week is not to become the best Minecraft player. It's to really catch up on my math skills so I don't get so frustrated when I'm doing math math assignments. So find those little things that you can do to really help you set yourself up for success and help your kids set themselves up for success as well as they go back into school. I hope that these tips were helpful for you. And again, I hope you hit subscribe because we have more podcast episodes following this to help you in other ways for your kids, including talking about anxiety, talking about faith, which is so important, especially as they're going back to school and influenced by so many other people. And we're also going to be talking about how to set up a strong academic plan to help you reach these academic goals that you have set for yourself and for your kids. So again, hit subscribe so you don't miss any of those upcoming episodes. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time, keep building a life that rocks. Bye. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. Just because the show is over doesn't mean we have to stop hanging out. Hit subscribe and dive into another episode or jump on over to my YouTube channel for more content to help you thrive as a working mom. Ready to get into action? You can find a number of resources at yourliferocks.com, including the free weekly success planning course. Sign up for free at yourliferocks.com. Talk to you soon.